and hello YouTube. This is Thomas Judge back once again with another short YouTube reading guide series. Today is the third video, walking through the correct reading order of the Invincible Comics Universe by Robert Kirkman and his Skybound imprint. To create this reading guide, I've read the 252 comic issues that comprise the entire Invincible Universe, including all the essential spin-offs and the essential tie-ins, and I've used that knowledge to build the internet's most detailed reading map for this particular part of superhero comics. So with no further ado, ladies and gentlemen, here is that reading map. So today we're going to look at all the comics that are part of the Invincible Universe of Comics, which we could call the Invincibiliverse or the Kirkmaniverse, I guess, but that aren't invincible. So this video is for all you completionists out there. So grab your pens and papers and start taking notes. Final warning, I keep my guides pretty spoiler free, but in this case, the assumption is you will have read all 146 issues of Invincible before watching this. If you have not, this is your warning. There will be some spoilers here. If you don't want to hear them, then just download the map and go from there without watching this video. So with no further ado, let's zoom in right to the top of the map. In fact, we started here last time. This is where we had Invincible Volume 1, Family Matters. Well, actually, there's something you should read before that. And that is this. So... The red circles are the new ones that weren't in the map from video one in the series. So what we have here is Capes. Capes is a three issue series starring a superhero called Bolt. You can see him on the cover there. It was actually released before the first issue of Invincible and feels a lot like a webcomic. It introduces the idea of Capes Inc, which is kind of like a police department staffed only by supers. But it isn't very good and only mentioned the Guardians of the Globe once and in passing. So you'd be forgiven if you skip this in your reading. But anyway, there it is. The next thing I'd recommend we do is actually head over to the left and start reading this. So you can see this here. This is called Brit. Again, this was originally released before Invincible Issue 1. That's why it's placed where it is on the map. But it carried on for quite some time. In fact, Brit is a major player in the Invincible universe, often behind the scenes, admittedly. And we come across him quite a lot in the main series. What you can see here is volume one, which is collected in a trade paperback called Old Soldier. It's actually comprised of three um, quite thick one-shot issues. The first one is just called Brit. The second one is just called A Cold Death or A Cold Death. And the third one is called Brit, Red, White, Black and Blue. Back to the map here. So this is really good. It's good art good story. It features Cecil from Invincible briefly. Uh, he's a character in Invincible if you haven't read it, but he's there. And it mentions both the Guardians of the Globe and Mark Grayson. So definitely part of the Invincible universe. So let's continue on down for a little while. And here we have Brit Trade Paperback 2. So this is called AWOL which is an acronym that means absent without leave. It's worth noting that both this and the next volume are not written by Kirkman. Instead, they're written by someone else called Bruce Brown. Don't let this put you off, they're both great. Now, AWOL collects issues one to six. Keep in mind the last volume we just looked at only collected three standalone one shots. That's why this one, volume two or collection two, um, collects issues one to six. Continuing down, we have Brit Trade Paperback 3, which is called FUBAR, which is also an acronym that stands for, well, you can Google it yourself. Anyway, it contains issues 7 to 12, and it wraps up several story threads from Volume 2, while still keeping the door open for more stories. I'd recommend reading them all back to back, without trying to work out where they fit in with Invincible. I would just read these three trade paperbacks, that's it, all good. Now, the line here does continue on downwards, as you can see. But rather than continuing on down, I am going to address the elephant in the room um, and I'm going to actually move over to look at Astonishing Wolfman, which you can see in the middle. This is also a series written by Kirkman, much like Invincible. Um, and what you can see here is um, trade collection, what they call volume one. Keep in mind, this is volume with a small V. If you don't know what that means, then I explain it in my other guides. But trade collection one, and this includes issues one to seven. I am not a fan of The Astounding Wolfman. I hoped it would be good, but it's not. It's quite tired and quite cliched. What we have here then, with the big two in the bottom corner, is Astounding Wolfman, volume with a small v, two, which includes the issues eight to ten, 
and Invincible 57, and then issues 11 to 12. So this is a seamless crossover, actually. We saw this Invincible trade paperback 11, Happy Days, which you can see right next to it here. So that's kind of why I've, I've located these two next to each other. They happen at the exact same time. And whilst Invincible has one issue of Standing Wolfman, Wolfman has one issue of Invincible, and it works really well, to be honest. Let's continue to scroll down, and we see Astounding Wolfman volume with a small v3 so this includes issues 13 to 18 now i will point something out here this is the first time that we see or we're introduced to a very clever technique that kirkman uses to anchor various issues within different series within a larger universe in this case issue 15 of the astounding wolfman references the spoiler events of invincible issue 60 by using some identical pages locking it in in other words, it has some it has some images or like two or three actual pages in a standing wolf one, which are the exact same pages and the exact same events as Invincible, but it kind of fits in having it here, so you can tell exactly when something has happened. Uh, also, issue sixteen has a capes cameo, but that's not really very important, I suppose. Cecil's characterization is now definitively at odds with how he's shown in Invincible, and there's also a larger arc building in a standing wolf man, so it can feel a little bit weird, but you might as well stick with it. So we continue down here and we have Astounding Wolfman Volume 4. Uh, sorry, it's this orange one here, which includes issues 19 to 25 and that ends the run. The last page states that this will be continued in Garden of the Globe Volume 1. It kind of is, but it's not really relevant. Like Astounding Wolfman kind of just sits by itself, really. Having said that, at this point, we are going to move back over to the left and look at Guarding the Globe Volume 1. Just to clarify, if I scroll up, I would actually recommend Brit leading straight into Garden Globe. So, um, this series is written by Benito Serino and Kirkman. Garden Globe Volume 1, um, which I will call Volume 1, is called Under Siege, collects issues 1 to 6. Again, it uses that same kind of temporal locking in process that Kirkman's come up with. In other words, the first five pages from this are actually lifted directly from issue 71 in Invincible. So again, it uses this clever anchoring technique to show exactly where this is set. The series brings back Wolfman, The Face, Brit, all those characters. It continues smoothly on with Guarding the Globe Volume 2, which is called Hard to Kill. I'm calling this Volume 2 because this is where the numbers reset. And so this again collects issues 1 to 6, but of Volume 2 of Guarding the Globe. Don't get confused by that easy to get confused. I find it annoying when these sort of renumbers happen, but hopefully this guide helps. Overall, I have to say, when it comes to Garden of the Globe, it's very much more a continuation of Brit and not a Standing Wolfman. And the second volume there reintroduces the Mauler Twins, which references um, this Guarding the Globe volume when that reintroduction happens within the Invincible series. So there'll be a point in Invincible you see the Mauler Twins and it says, oh, see the events in Guarding the Globe? This is what it's talking about. It's talking about Guarding the Globe Volume 2. So whilst you can't get away without reading it, it does add a nice bit of depth and nuance to reading Invincible. Straight on from Guarding the Globe, we then have another series which is actually called Invincible Universe. I don't know if you can see the text there. Invincible, hang on, let's zoom right in. Invincible Universe. It's, yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to see. It is kind of hard to see, admittedly. Um, but Invincible Universe here, um, it does make it a bit confusing when I refer to the Invincible Universe of comics, but, you know, what can we do? Interestingly, the Invincible Universe series is written by Phil Hester, um, who followers of my channel may recall from my 12-part video series going through the Top Cow universe of comics, where Phil Hester wrote some darkness issues. Anyway, what we have here is Invincible Universe trade paperback 1, collecting issues 1 to 6. It's called On Deadly Ground. The opening pages here are an alternate point of view of the events of Invincible 100. So it's the exact same events, the exact same time, the exact same dialogue, but it has been redrawn to look at it from a different quote unquote camera angle. Either way, it basically locks in the chronology here so you know exactly when to read this. The opening pages are completely in step with Invincible 100. And these issues are a direct sequel to Guarding the Globe. What we have here then, you can see here, is the second collection, which is called Above the Law, and that collects um, issues one to six. Again, um, so technically, again, this is volume two, and there's volume two, one there. 
It's above the law, issues one to six, and the character here is Best Tiger, who is a brilliant new character that I could have definitely seen more of. Um, just to give you just a quick recap, if we just go back up to the top, I would recommend reading Brit, volume one, volume two, volume three, Garden of the Globe, collections one and two, or volumes one and two, and Invincible Universe, volumes one and two as well. Um, they're all basically one long Brit-centric story, um, and they're pretty good as a result. Um, the uh, Astonishing or Astounding Wolfman here, I would not really recommend reading. You don't need to. It's not very good, and it doesn't really make much of a difference if you skip it, whereas the uh, the Brit, Garden of the Globe, and Invincible Universe ones are much more invincibly. Anyway, let's keep on going down. Nothing else going on on the left. So we get right to the bottom and we can see here um, Science Dog. So this is kind of a weird little thing. That's why it's in dotted lines because really you can totally ignore it. It's not actually set in the Invincible Universe. Um, let me explain. Science Dog is two issues that represent as backups to Invincible issues. Uh, I think issue one ends saying something like continues in issue 75, but don't be misled. These were backups within some issues. Um, I think they were in the Invincible number 70-ish, 75 and a few others in the 70s. Um, anyway, it's available as two single issues on Comixology. I've only ever found one of them physically, so I can't attest to whether they're both available as floppies, and they're utterly unrelated to Invincible. However, the reason to note them here is that the comic Science Dog features within Invincible, because it's Mark Grayson's favourite comic, and so now that comic has now been actually made in the real world. Yeah, it's a little bit meta. This is a comic that was in the comic and is now a real comic in the real world, but it's still a comic. But it's a really great read and highly recommended. So there are the covers, so you can pick them up if you get a chance. Back to the map here. Let's start moving up the right-hand side of the map. Let's see what we find here. Not, not very much, actually. Uh, let's keep going. Da -da -da. Ah, here we are. Here we come across Invincible Presents Atom Eve, um, and actually Atom Eve and Rexplode. So this contains the two-issue mini, which is Invincible Presents Atom Eve, which is written by Benito Serino again. Um, it's not bad. It's then followed by Invincible Presents Atom Eve and Rexplode, which is a three-issue mini, which is a direct sequel to the Atom Eve two-issue mini. You can get all these as single issues, or you can get them as a trade. If you get them as a trade, it's got this cover you can see with both Atom Eden and Rexplode on it. Um, and you can't actually get them as separate ones. So if you only like one of the miniseries, you're kind of stuck. You have to get the trade. Also note that this should be read after issue 60, which is still standing. You can see that here. Um, and the reasons for that are pretty, pretty obvious, hopefully. Okay, um, where next? Well, let's carry on going up. Ah, let's dip briefly back over to the left. Because what we have here is the official handbook of the Invincible Universe, which is much like the Marvel handbook issues that you can get sometimes. In other words, this is a mainly text-based encyclopedia to the characters and events in the Invincible Universe. There are two issues of this I'll show you here. The first covers uh, letters A to J, and the second covers letters K to W, because there's no one in Invincible whose name starts with XYZ, I guess. Keep in mind, if you go back to the map here, you'll see that this really is set after issue 33, give or take. So if you're going to read it, read it roundabout during or after Three's Company. Um, don't read them before that point because they contain spoilers, and reading them after that point will make them feel a little bit outdated and boring. Basically, I would not recommend you going out of your way to get this Invincible Handbook thing, this pair of issues. Um, but if you want to, by all means, you can. All right, well, staying on the same level, let's head over to the right-hand side of the map. So if you recall, Three's Company is the volume that basically had, so this is uh, Trade Paperback 7, and this is Trade Volume 7 having an issue of Pact Volume 2, Issue 4 within it. So let's now have a quick look at what that means. So what you can see here is we've got Pact um, Volume 2 as the cover with the red circle nearest Invincible. Um, I'll show you the covers here, but this is from 2005, and it's a four-issue miniseries starring Invincible, Zephyr, who we'll talk about next time, Shadowhawk, and Firebreather. All four issues star Invincible, but they're all forgettable, they're all poorly written, and they're all young, adult-oriented. Keep in mind there's only four of these issues, there is no issue five, despite a page at the end advertising it. I do, however, want you to remember the name Zephyr, as we come back to it in our next and final video in this series. Moving smoothly along, we'll see 
I've got a dotted line here because the packed volume one, for those completionists among you who are wondering whether volume is is before packed volume four, uh, sorry, packed volume uh, two, um, is shown here. Now, the packed volume one is a three issue miniseries from 1994. It has nothing to do with Invincible. And instead it's an incomprehensible 90s slugfest of ridiculous cliche characters called things like Slam and Handgun. It is terrible. I'm a fan of 90s comics and even I was like, this, this is just unacceptably bad. Anyway, so there we are on our map. Um, and that's where Pact fits in. And hopefully you can see it's uh, kind of a busy area here in the middle, but hopefully that all makes sense. Okay, well, we've got this line on the right. So let's go all the way up and see where this line starts. It starts here with Tech Jacket. Now, this is an interesting one. The first issues of Tech Jacket actually preceded Invincible and it was a bit of a project that was very close to Kirkman's heart. You should check out some of the interviews where he talks about his grand plans for it and how he's a bit sad it never came to, came to be. So this is Tech Jacket Volume 1. It's called The Boy From Earth. Um, it's weak. I didn't like it. It's a very predictable, pretty rubbish version of The Giver, if you're familiar with the anime. It's got a very manga feel in tone. Um, let's see, it's published in 2003 and collects issues 1 to 6. This line then goes on for ages. Let's zoom out before we zoom back in. And the reason that it goes on for absolutely ages is because Tech Jacket Volume 2, which you can see here, is called Liftoff. Um, that is next. And Issue 7, which comes straight after Issue 6, came out in 2013. So about 9 or 10 years after Issue 6. Then there was Issue 8. And then there was a three-issue miniseries, which was also called Tech Jacket. The first issue of that miniseries is set in the Invincible War, issue 60, and it brings the series both up to date and it drags it into the Invincible universe. So that's kind of why I've set volume two here, because it goes next to the Invincible War, which is happening at roughly the same point in the reading map. Okay, so if we continue on down, what we'll see with Tech Jacket is we then have collection three, which is called Touch the Sky. You can see that cover there. Contains issues one to six and came out in 2014. Generally much better writing, much better art, and a much stronger overall direction. It's got an interesting and relatable antagonist for once, and I love the redesign of the tech jacket halfway through. That then follows smoothly on to what they call volume, and again it's volume with a small v, four, which is called All Falls Down. This collects issue seven to 12. Please note that the last issue is set after Invincible volume 19, which you can see here is called um, The War at Home. And you really need to read The War at Home first before you read the last issue of Tech Jacket All Falls Down. That's really important. I've tried to stress it with the way these are located on the map, but I can't stress that enough. That's your spoiler warning. And that's where Tech Jacket is. It does contain like a lot of Invincible references. It is clearly part of the Invincible universe. You will see Tech Jacket cropping up in Invincible after about this point, after about Invincible issue 60, Tech Jacket either crops up or is referenced a few times. So it's well worth checking out. Um, if you do want to check it out, um, it's quite tricky to, to get it. Um, I'll show you on Comixology here. This is Tech Jacket on Comixology. Here are the collector's editions. But if you get them in single issues, what you'll find is we've got collected edition, uh, sorry, collected issues for singles one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then it goes straight into the 2014 series, which means that we're missing three issues from a mini series. But if we look at this, Comicsology hides them back here for some reason. Um, just so you know, in case you're buying them as singles. All right, back to the map, and we can see here that's the entire reading map. Um, and that's all for today, people. That's the full Invincible Universe of Comics. But next time we'll finish a series of videos by talking about the various series people often say you should read to understand Invincible, and we'll decide if that's actually true. As always, this map is available on my website for you to download free of charge. If you want to download it or print it out, please do. It covers 252 issues. As always, please like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, where I turn to post a one-tweet review daily sometimes more more often than that about whatever i'm reading that day so it's a good way to see what i'm up to and what i'm planning if you want to support the channel it's easy head over to amazon and pick up the first volume of my pro superhero novel no gods or kings it costs less than a dollar it's free if you've got on kindle limited and a free excerpt of the first book is on the same website as the reading map which is nogodsorkings.com the link is in the description below as always and until next time everyone stay classy <laughs>